and we wish we hadn't falled. And we tell ourselves we're never going to do it again, ever again, ever. And then next time we do it again, we say, I'm never doing it again. I'm really sorry, God. I shouldn't have done that. I know it was wrong. I did it even though I knew it was wrong. And I'm never going to do it again until we do whatever it was we said we were never going to do again. And that's not a happy life for a believer. It's not what we want to be. It's not where we need to be. It's a life of defeat. It's a life of failure. But God has better things for us than defeat. Verse 3 says, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We see in our notes there, Number one, under capital letter A, liberty from the law, we're not justified by the works of the law, and we cannot live right through the works of the law. Um, keeping the law doesn't make a person right with God. Um, having a list of things which are going to keep you from sinning isn't going to keep you from sinning, and isn't it going to make you a spiritual success. That is not to say that standards are not important. They're extremely important. And we'll go over that the next week. But understand that by doing the works of the law, we cannot be free from sin. That's because our freedom comes from Christ, not from the law. By trying our very best to do right and to do all the things we're supposed to do, we're not going to find spiritual victory. We'll find our spiritual victory as we walk in Christ. Spiritual victory is all about a close relationship with Christ. It's not about trying to uh, be the perfect person we're supposed to be. It comes from being from the law, the thing which condemned us before God. And we also see we have great liberty from sin. Verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The believer who walks after the flesh has death in his heart, if you will. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, and death is uh, sin is never good. It always produces bad things in the life of a believer. A believer never sins and gets good out of it. Never. Never, ever. And uh, when we... Re yes, please. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. When we receive Christ, we die in Christ to the world in the old ways. Our position is, is that we are dead to sin. We're dead to it. But, what is our actual actuality, if you will? It depends on how we walk in Christ. This is, if you will, our positional, to some degree functional, and, uh, I'll keep failing, and maybe at some point, um, maybe things will get a little better. That's not what God has for us. God has so much more for every believer than constant defeat. We see uh, in Galatians 5.16. Can I get a volunteer to read it, please? Galatians 5.16. This I say, then, walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Roman numeral 2, the flesh versus the spirit. And uh, we see in Galatians 5.16, the Bible gives a command to walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is the key behind spiritual victory. This is the key to getting rid of stubborn sins. This is how the alcoholic can put his bottle away and never come to it again, and never be an alcoholic again. By the way, the 12-step programs don't work. I've been to them before, not as a 12-stepper, but as a nurse. My, in, in nursing school, I had to go to uh, um, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. People would say, hi, I'm Bill. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Bill, everyone would say, and, or whatever. And Maybe Bill hasn't drunk for five years or whatever, but he still thinks of himself as an alcoholic. There's no victory in that. And by the way, what happens without to do a program, it becomes kind of a cult almost. It really does. Like a church. 
It, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a pseudo-church where they worship the God of our own understanding, which is a quote from the AA book. Well, believers have something much better than that. The believer who gets spiritual victory is never again an alcoholic. That's gone behind him. He doesn't have to be a drug addict anymore. It's gone behind him. He doesn't have to be uh, caught up in a life full of thoughts which are evil. He doesn't have to have a bad temper anymore. He doesn't have to be impatient anymore. A believer who gets spiritual victory no longer has to walk in sin. And it's a great freedom when you get rid of sin and it's done. But it doesn't happen automatically. We see about walking in the Spirit that it's the means of victory over sin and it's the path to a powerful life. And uh, it's the gateway to answered prayer. You want answered prayers? Get rid of the sins in your life. Pray according to what God wants you in um, Watch with joy as God gives you the abundance of joy through answered prayer. We see about the lusts of the flesh. The flesh always desires wickedness. The flesh wants what's bad. The flesh does not want what's good. The flesh doesn't want what's eternal. The flesh wants what's now, what's for here and now. The flesh always loves the easy way out. And this is true. If you have a situation and if you have two possible solutions and what the one solution is an easy way out it's probably the wrong solution now that's not always that's a generality but the truth is is the flesh always likes to choose the easy way out and if you find yourself always choosing the easy way out of situations check yourself and see how you're really living the easy way out is usually the wrong way out because wrong is usually a lot easier than right Telling a lie is easier than the truth. Being lazy is easier than doing hard work. And we could go on. The flesh loves the easy way out. Don't walk after the flesh. We see the battle. This is uh, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. The flesh and the spirit are contrary. A person cannot walk in both at the same time. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one or love the other. He will hold to the one and despise the other. The Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't live for God and money. You cannot walk in the flesh and walk in the spirit at the same time. It can't happen. The moment you start walking in the flesh is the moment you've ceased from walking in the spirit. And the flesh only wins when we let it. The flesh only wins because we allow it to win. When we lose our temper, we make the choice to lose our temper. People say, well, I couldn't help myself. I lost my temper. And that's not true. We make the choice to lose our temper. Gradually, the point comes where our temper has gained such control over us that we have no longer any control over our actions and we blow up. But we made the choice to give up control of our temper and we can make the choice to get back control over it too. Same goes for lying. Same goes for a unkind word. Same goes for all these things. Sin is a choice. When we're walking in the Spirit instead of in the flesh, it's when we're walking close to God, we have no unconfessed sins. It's when we're actively seeking to be close to God, reading our Bible, praying, doing the things each believer needs to spend time doing to get the strength from God to live right. And um, when we're in the Spirit, our ear is listening to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. So that way when the Holy Spirit says that's wrong, it'll lead you away from me, we turn aside from it. When the Holy Spirit tells us uh, to witness to someone, we hear his voice. This is walking in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves to guide us, and he does guide us, but he doesn't force us. This is very un critical to understand. The Holy Spirit does not force us. Yes? Uh, almost everybody has trouble with their temper. And... Uh, it's usually because we react to something. What should we do about that? Well, good planning often helps with that as far as just in a very practical level. Good planning often helps to avoid impatient situations and bad tempers. It really does. Um, say you're about ready to hit somebody. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Walk away. Yes. Only by pride comes contention. I think God many times shows us we don't think that we're that prideful. But when that anger flares up, it's because of pride. You know? Good point. 
We'll see that uh, actually a little bit below. I'm glad you brought that up. The temper is a beast.